Hey guys, I wanted to take a couple moments today so that we could talk about uh, scoring, kind of what it does and some of those do's and don'ts so that we can just have a, a little bit of a better understanding and also so that it just makes it nice and easy. Um, so one of the things that you'll see a lot um, through a variety of teachers is anytime people are making connections, uh, they will tell their students to score and slip um, or score and spray, uh, however you want to interpret that. Um, there's a lot of minutia that we could really get into, but let's not go that route and we'll just take that simple route and uh, look at what it does and what it means. So generally speaking, scoring is a process where you put a series of incisions or grooves into a material. So it's not native to clay, but it's very, very, very common within clay. Um, so let's say we have these two pieces of clay that we want to stick together. I know these are just lumps, but you could picture this one as being a, a cup and that you were going to put a handle on it. Or maybe this was a figure and you wanted to sculpt the head separately and put that head right on top. Whatever the case is, we have these two separate pieces of clay that we now want to put together. Uh, so our first step is that we're going to take um, a fork or just any tool that you can put grooves in. Um, so if you don't like using a fork, sometimes I like using just pieces of bamboo or chopsticks. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything incredibly sharp. And we are just going to make a series of these grooved lines. And we can be pretty, uh, pretty liberal or pretty aggressive when it comes to how much to put on there. So this in and of itself is what we call scoring. It's putting those lines in so that we can then uh, add a little bit of moisture and really meld those two pieces of material together. Now when it comes down to the term slurry or slip, slip is just a, a liquid clay, uh, and the same with slurry. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of you guys don't have that, so what we are gonna think about is just using a little water. So what I'll do is grab my sponge, I'll dip it just in some uh, clean water, and I will just dab that sponge on the surface. I'm gonna dab both sides, and then I'm just gonna give them a couple minutes to rest. And what's gonna happen is the, the water is gonna wear down that very top surface um, in a little bit of clay, uh, almost like a clay paint is gonna form uh, on that surface. You'll be able to tell because when that clay touches anything, or I'm gonna use my example of my hand, a little bit of transference happens. So a little bit of that material goes from the scored area um, onto whatever it touches. Now one thing about uh, using water or slip is that you don't want it to be too wet. I know that sounds crazy, right? How can you have water not be too wet? The main thing is that when we attach our pieces of clay, we don't want them to be uh, slick or slippery. And I'll show you what I mean right here. So if I have these two pieces, same as those, right? We'll do some score lines on both sides. Again, I'll use that sponge. And we will just hydrate both of those sides. Now, if I didn't allow these to set up at all, what would happen is if I go to push them together while they're still almost like dripping or pooling water on it, when I go to push it together, it still just wants to slide around and move a lot. Um, so it's kind of, if you can see right there, has taken away my seams um, and I am just uh, essentially left with two pieces of clay that are sliding around on one another. All that stuff that's getting generated as we slide is what we call slip or slurry which is good, but it, because we tried to stick these pieces together when there was so much water, uh, it didn't really get to bond or integrate um, in a very strong manner. So with having ones that we left out for just a couple of minutes, what I like to do is I just tend to dab it against my arm. If I get just the slightest little bit of clay or slurry, uh, to show up on my arm and you could also just do that right to the table and you could do it to the sponge any way you want to test it is fine uh, but once we get to that point where it's not pooling water um, but it is just a little bit tacky that's where we push those two sides together you can almost give it these little twists or little melts and then from there you've made a very nice connection where it doesn't want to slip away from one another uh, 
This is a piece that I had done earlier today. I left it out so it could dry a lot. And again, I just took those two pieces of clay and slapped them together. And what we'll see as I try to snap this piece apart is that on the interior, there is no seam left. Uh, that clay was able to really uh, work itself uh, into itself or meld itself together. Uh, and there's no history of having a seam, which means that you have a very good chance that it's going to go through the firing process um, and survive without any issues. Uh, try not to overthink it on those smaller pieces and things like terracotta. Just do your best. Um, if you're working with kids, have them do their best, uh, but don't stress out about it. Things will generally survive one way or another with the types of clay that we're using. Um, but it's always great to practice these little tricks that can go a long way if they wind up getting into clay as they get a little bit older. Okay guys, thank you very much and I hope you guys make some beautiful stuff. Goodbye.